doing a little maintenance to the excavator, one of the things that bugged me was the backrest on the seat was crooked. The left side of it was higher. Took it apart a little bit, just for fun to see, see if I could figure something out. So far, the only thing I, I did see that, that this connector here is loose, so I'm gonna remove this cover it, tighten this up, and see if I can loosen the mounts and make them even. Clearly crooked. And this side I can I can bring it up a little bit, but not much. And I can bring this Maybe bring it down a little bit. It's not going to give much on that side coming down and this side going up. I can get a, maybe half inch. There's there's four holes, but only two of those holes are threaded. So this is what it looks like now. I lowered the left side of this bracket here. Tighten up that. That's a lot tighter. And the mechanism is loosened, loosened up now with the little WD-40. And it looks a lot better. All right. The main reason I was even messing with that is what I want to do is to refrain from always going back in the in the garage and their toolbox to get something that's excavator you know unique and just to carry some spare parts around that I need. Uh, I'm going to attach this. This is an extra tall 50 cal ammo can. I'm going to attach it here, weld up some kind of fixture for it and uh, I'll, uh, I'll lose a little bit of of the uh, turn radius, but I don't plan to get so close to walls anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to wing this too. I'm not sure how I want to do it. I'm going to use angle angle bar first to create a you know a holder or a bracket, and then try to devise some way where I can relatively easily remove the can, or at least have a way to lock it to the bracket. And most of all, I forgot to mention, I wanna, I wanna store my power driver with the required socket for my quick release hitch. That's the main thing that I kept running back and forth looking for. So if I carry it with me, it's gonna be a lot easier. So now I'm gonna start brainstorming for a way to mount this somewhere like this so I can open the top and retrieve things that I need out of it and just, just have it semi-permanently attached. See what happens. Okay, I'm back after a little break, and uh, this is what I've been kind of thinking about. I was going to weld this angle bar here horizontally, and then made this little box for the ammo can. And you know, that'll work. I'll trim these edges so there's no sharp edges on there and then tack weld it up. I mean, that'll hold the can, but uh, I need a, need a way to obviously keep the can from bouncing out. So I'm still thinking about how to do that. Maybe a strap or a, uh, like a reverse cap and then 
put some threaded rod on each side, but that's kind of clunky. So I think what I'm going to do is proceed with mocking everything up and tacking it and then see what kind of method I want to use to secure it in there because I want to be able to take it out. I think that'd be better than, than having the ammo can permanently attached. So I'm just going to wing it and we'll see what happens. All right, welcome back. This is uh, <clears throat> this is the next day. Got some progress made on the on the rack for the tall ammo can. So I'm just going to wrap this up and show you wh where I am so far. What we have now is uh, uh, everything welded up and painted. Painted it black. This is kind of an off gray, but. It's pretty secure, and it's got enough. Uh, it's got enough flexibility that it's not so tight that it will crack. Here's the ammo can, and this is the this is the tall ammo can you can find on Lazada. It's the same, all the same dimensions except for the height as as a regular ammo can. And in here, so far, I've I've got the essentials that I I really don't want mixed up in my main toolbox. So I've got all kinds of grease fittings, grease fitting covers. This is where I'm going to keep quick release pins uh, as well as the main pins. Yeah, I still, I still have, I've got 11 more of these on, on the way so I don't have to switch pins every time I want to change a bucket or a tool. And, and there's plenty of room left over for some of the tools that I'll take out of the plastic toolbox they gave me. Uh, and also the main thing is I'm going to keep keep a uh, impact wrench in here with uh, with the socket that fits the quick hitch. So I'm never going to be without that. Closing this up, it's just a matter of popping this in. And that's it. It's, it's a nice, I made it a nice snug fit. It would take a lot to pop that out of there. And I know I said I was going to put a strap on it, and I, I still might. But that's the end of this project. This The seat turned out really good. The seat is not crooked anymore and uh, the main goal of getting my tools carrying it with me is done so I'm gonna move on to the next thing oh and I also wanted to mention I I talked about seat belts I, I removed the seat belts and I also removed the the armrests here because what I I found that, first of all, they weren't very good. They were, no matter how you tightened them, they would droop. Uh, but more importantly, like this one was always getting in the way of the throttle. And especially like, let's say you're working on it and you, you wanna do something with the Kubota while it's running. It's not very safe because these these can easily hit your throttle or they can hit your controls if you have the seat open. Even if you, you know, there is a lockout switch that I like. This switch here will lock out your controls while it's running, which is very cool, very good to have. And the armrests were just getting in the way. And so that's it. That's canned heat. We'll see you next time.